to the latest podcast from Crafty Cuts, and this one is epic, the history of breakbeats. So sit back or stand up. Most of all, listen and enjoy the ride.
and shake it, baby, shake that ass. I love it when you feel like getting nasty. Your body, your body next to mine. I gotta make the sexy booty mine. And shake it, baby, shake that ass. I love it when you feel like getting nasty. Cuts on his latest installment of the funky goodness. Mm. Oh. Oh, that's good. That's good. That's good.
your time to get lively
rewind like that. If I turn like this, then it turn like that. Take it down like this, then it turn like that. If I took like this, then it took like that. Give me it like this, give me it like that. Lady, do it like this. Fella, do it like that. I want you to do it like this. Break it down like that. I want you to sing like this. Come sing like that. Uh, uh, uh. Can't get a 
let your beat strong. Punch in the back. Yeah. Punch on the right. Get a no bleed. Punch on the left. Yeah. Whack with a knife. Get a no bleed. Punch in the back. Yeah. Punch on the right. Get a no bleed. Punch on the left.
This is me, Martin, aka Crafty Cuts, and I'm here with one of my favourite producers in the world, the Plump DJs, Lee Rouse. How are you, Lee? Really good, Martin. Great to hear from you, and great to hear your mix as well. We've been banging it all afternoon in the studio. Well, there's a lot of your tracks in there, and you know that um, as a DJ, I've played a lot of your records out and been a big fan of your music for a long time. And uh, I've got a few questions for you, buddy. So, first one is, when did you first discover Breakbeat, and when did you guys first start and writing music together? That's an interesting couple of questions. Um, I suppose really I first came into contact with the breaks that were used in the early hip hop eras and that was really the start of uh, a journey for me that lasted right up until uh, the 90s when we started making breaks ourselves and sampling a lot of those early hip hop records and those early breaks from those records from the old uh, funk and street soul records that um, they were playing from. That's brilliant and I know that obviously that has been a big part of your um, sound. So when you're making a track, where do you get your inspiration from? Then? Is it from a lot of funk? Yeah. Well, I suppose Andy and I have been making dance music, you know, the same way in terms of our planning and inspiration in the studio in Soho for some 20 years now. The inspiration will come from like a sample that one of us has found or a really cool record or a record we've heard when we've been out in clubs touring um, or finding out about a new piece of equipment, you know, or discovering or rediscovering an old piece of equipment, an old synth. Um, yeah, you know, that's where a lot of the idea process starts or the construction process starts. Because that's probably the $50 million question is what sort of synths and stuff were you using to make all your all your sounds and stuff? Originally we didn't have a big um, studio here. I mean, it's literally a bedroom studio with a couple of synths and uh, we had a Juno and a, and a Pro One and you know a couple of guitar pedals and a small desk and a couple of speakers. It wasn't really anything um, extravagant, but I mean, in a way that pushed us and the kit to the limits really. And, and we, you know, we managed to get some really interesting sounds. Yeah. Um, the mid nineties was a golden era for breakbeat um why why do you think this um it was amazing to be part of that process and we were quite prolific in our releases and experiments during that period so we've become quite instrumental in the progress of the breakbeat scene and um you know there, there's a number of people all over the world doing it all at the same time but there was a few sort of um, standout records of the era like um high state of consciousness or other sort of one-off breaks tunes that were being played in house charts and we were really going after those records and that was really the start of us um, getting enthusiastic with the idea of using breaks in dance music and, and pushing that genre and I think like pioneers like the Chemical Brothers and Fatboy Slim and Prodigy as well um, really kept us looking forward um, what's the most random place you have found one of those gold mine samples that you've so deliciously used <laughs> Um, one of the big ones um, was the Eddie Bowe sample, Funk It's the Fan, was the vocal, and we just found it randomly in a bargain basement. Uh, back in the day in Soho, where well, the studio still is now, there was lots of record shops, and we used to just walk around Soho going into the basements and spending hours and hours and hours looking at piles of rubbish and occasionally finding the odd record that uh, ended up sort of becoming legendary for us, really. So that was great, but not an unexpected place to find a good sample, you know? <laughs> but um, a lot of those samples come from from records and from the results of sifting and um but we did find the sound of bacon frying once on a bbc record sampler which we used in one of our tunes um, <laughs> and no one still noticed it to this day that's brilliant so what is next for you guys next for the pump djs um well i hope that i mean you know that you and i and stanton's can do another show like the one we recently did down in brighton the yeah, idea of that is on the horizon um concord 2 absolutely just went off like i've never really yeah. seen before and i'd really like to you know do more shows like that the three of us go really well together and the people you know really picked up what we what we put down collectively so that's really positive uh, opportunity for the future but beyond that um, we've got a new album coming out it's um, the latter half of this year which we're really excited about and we're working hard on that and we've got a title for that album because obviously i've been speaking to you about that and that is that coming out about october november time you reckon yeah brilliant. Um, brilliant. i can't give anything away yet but um you know we're right in the midst of it at the moment and trying to enjoy the process and um yeah it's, it's all sounding pretty good at the moment so looking out like november i think would be the release day at the moment so well if you go to clubs now people you'll be able to hear some of these amazing new pump dj tracks and some of their old ones that they've revamped as well well listen lee plump yeah thanks but, for including them on the mix you know there's some there's some blinding old tunes on there it's like a trip down memory lane looking at the track list so wish you the best of luck with that and yeah we we'll hope to be sharing a stage with you soon definitely thank you so much lee and andy for such good music over the years plump djs memorable memorable moments and thanks for so much good music cheers lee cheers martin 
Right, this is Crafty Cuts, and I'm with two very talented young men, Matt and Aston from the Freestylers. Hello, guys, how you doing? Hi, mate, how you doing? All right, Craft, how are you? Yep, I'm really well. good. We'll get straight into the questions. My first question is, how long have you guys been making music together now? Uh, I think we started in 96, was our first release. Yeah. Uh, Drop the boot on our own label called Scratch City. Wow. Aston, you've done stuff on um, Suburban Base for a while, didn't you? Yeah, I was working with a young female called DJ Rap for quite a few years, and we released a track called Spiritual Aura, originally on Lucky Spin recordings. Yeah, that was like that. a massive foundation, sort of hardcore rave jungle tune, I guess. <laughs> And Matt, who did you um, used to make music with? Uh, I used to make music with Andy from The Plumps. We used to record under the name Strike. Did a house record in the early 90s called You Sure Do. Yeah. But, um, then me and Andy did Cut and Paste for a while, which was kind of a breaks thing. And uh, I used to do a lot of the different uh, different tracks on Fresconova under different names back in the day. I used to make up a different name every week, pretty much. Um, so how do you guys manage to stay so relevant? I mean, you've always managed to change your style and switch up and move with the times, but I don't know, your sound just adapts and moves progressively. Uh, how do you stay so relevant, Aston? I've know. always wondered how you stay uh, so In music, I think you have to just do your own thing and create your own vibe. And if you're kind of, you know, you have a bit of success in doing that, I think you can kind of adapt your sound around what you do. So I think that's kind of what we've been doing all this time is kind of listening to sounds that are current, etc., but kind of adapting them in our own way. Plus, obviously, the advancement of technology. When we first made We Rock Hard, it was just done on samplers uh, and just kind of loops and stuff and loads of outboard gear, keyboards, and it was just done on Cubase on Atari. But nowadays, obviously, it's all done on your computer. So I think that helps as well, develop your sound, really. Yeah, it makes making music a lot quicker, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, even like, you know, sound we're kind of doing at the moment, we've kind of gone back to our old sort of big beat ish style. Yeah. But even though, even though when you put the sounds in like the new technology, it kind of adds a fresh element to it anyway. So here's a good question for you guys. Um, this Breakbeat podcast is basically my representation of music that I've loved for the last 15 years, and I put it into a mix. So what other artists would you say over this period of time, alongside yourselves, have kind of stood out with their sound? As far as Breakbeat, um, Finger Licking was a great Finger Licking, and, and then Skin, and um, Wall of Sound, used to love Wall of Sound. And there was just so many different artists, really. Well, put, putting this mix together, it just made me realise how good the music has been over the last 15 years and that leads me on to my next question what would you say is your favorite place in the world to play um i, we, I think we've always had a lot of fun in australia uh, i think because uh you know our music has gone down well there we, we used to go there a few times every year and we're always well looked after and the food's great and the sun um i like uk crowds because they're you know they're always a bit more uh discerning but in a good way you know definitely you... I, th- I, th- I think everywhere you know i know it sounds a bit cliche but everywhere seems to be a you know a good crowd's a good crowd you played with like some of the biggest names in the world and you toured especially when you used to when, in the early days when you toured america and stuff so have you got any memorable moments that just stand out like special times when when you guys got on stage and maybe something crazy happened or just a moment where you thought wow is this really happening to us i think from back in the day the biggest impact is still when we did the glastonbury show in 99 that was just like the real defining moment because it was like to see people in front of us and it was just amazing you know been working hard at it touring around for a year and a half and the music kind of doing pretty well at the time and you know, to see all the hard work had, had paid off in a way. So touring with Lenny Kravitz and stuff like that was pretty cool. But um, more recently, I guess the Big Day Out tour in Australia. So what labels have you guys released your music on? Remind us. Well, first off, there was Fresconova. We released our first two albums, We Rock Hard and Pressure Point on there. Then the next two albums, Raw as Fuck and Ventures in Freestyle, was released on yours and Lloyd's label, Against the Grain. And then we had uh, an album out a couple of years ago on Black Hole. So that's five albums, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what is next for you guys? What What are you planning on, or what have you got in the pipeline? And have you got any um, any interesting new pieces of music coming our way? 
Yeah, well, we actually got a release on your label, Instant Vibes, called Rude Boy. That's our next single. We're kind of aiming towards releasing just new material every few months, really. If you had to pick a record or, or, or maybe a few records, for you, what is your favourite record that you've made? Favourite Freestylers record? Yeah. Um, something from the We Rock Hard days, probably. I mean, I, I still love Don't Stop. You know, yeah. one of our first ever tracks. Uh, on a hard tip, I'd say the slammer. For some reason or other, it sounds the closest to me, like a tune that's kind of drum and bassy, but isn't drum and bass. Obviously, I have to say Push Up because that was a big commercial crossover record for us and kind of opened doors at the time, you know? But yeah, that would be it, really. That just about wraps it up, guys. But I really appreciate that you took some time out of your busy schedule. And I'd just like to say a personal thanks to myself, Crafty Cuts. Cheers, Matt and Aston, who are the freestylers.